Hey, what's up guys? Uh, welcome back to the second episode of Basics of Offense. Today we're going to be talking about uh, knees. I was going to do knees and kicks at the same time, but I feel like kicks would uh, kicks need more focus as far as uh, foot position and all that other stuff. So let's talk about the knees. Um, two ways, depending on whether you're orthodox or you're softball, I'm gonna demonstrate both so you guys can see as far as my foot position and how I go about uh, executing. So two ways uh, off of orthodox first. So again, uh, based on what I talked about in the first video, from uh, uh, shoulder width stance, I'm gonna step back to get into orthodox stance, put the hands up, and do it from the side, so from here. You step back like this, and then you put your hands up. And as I said, two ways to work with the knee, or to execute the knee. With the right or with the power knee, you just extend that way. So a lot of people are saying that you can go either on the balls of your feet or you can go um, flat footed. It really depends on you. Um, in my opinion, there's no wrong or right way to do it. Um, what matters is gaining the power from your hips. So you want to be able to extend your hips just like how I talked about in the previous video about being able to extend with your punches or using your hips or retain your hips, taking the power from your hips. So you want to step or so you can either step and load that uh, hip for your power knee. So as you can see, I'm not raising my, like some people, a lot of beginners, I, I, I see when they first start getting off, they just do this, they do this. Three things, three or four things. Um, gaining momentum from launching or launching and then using your hips to extend and pointing your uh, ankle down. So you want to make sure it's almost like a spear. Okay? So, and another important thing is your hand position. You don't want to bring your hand down like this, like you're fucking, I don't know, I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but you don't want to bring your hand down like that. My personal preference is I try to reach, so I get that forward momentum at the same time, um, using my hips to drive myself forward, I essentially go through the opponent. Um, in addition to pointing my toes down, or uh, basically pointing my toes down and and or kicking my ass, my own ass. So, so uh, again with a hand position, my personal preference, I try to reach and pull myself forward. That way I get that forward drive momentum. At the same time I get that guard. Have that sense of guard as far as if someone's gonna be throwing a, a counter punch or something. Okay, that's a power knee. Now let's move on to the left knee. All right, guys. So going back, uh, we're gonna be uh, switching over to left knee or the lead knee or the switch knee, however you guys want to call it. Uh, let's go back to, into the orthodox stance. So I'm going to be talking about this in the next um, episodes when we uh, start focusing on kicks and how to incorporate your kicks more into your roundhouse kicks um, or incorporate your hips more, sorry. So with the uh, uh, switch knee, there's two ways to go about it. So uh, incorporating your hips, it's the same concept as uh, using your power knee or your rear knee but you want to compensate for it having be having be your lead hip or your lead knee because it's closer to the opponent so as far as uh, delivering power and delivering damage you want to compensate for that for how do you do so how do you do that you 
essentially switch. Um, it's almost like you're switching stances for a millisecond or so. So you, you switch, and then same concept as when you're delivering the power knee. You use your hips to drive forward, point your toes, keep your hands up, and that's it. So from here, flying stance. So as you guys can see, I'm using my hip to drive my knee forward, pointing my toes so it's almost like a spear as much as possible. And I'm not lowering my, ha my hands as, or lowering my arms as uh, much as possible, but I'm still getting that forward drive momentum. So let's switch over to a southpaw stance where you pretty much do the same things, but in the southpaw stance. So for southpaw stance, like I said in my previous video, you step back with your left foot, being that your power hand is your left. So from here, power left knee. Okay, so depending on where the target is, obviously you get, you're gonna compensate for how far they are and whatnot. Um, let's move on to uh, the three ways you can throw the knees. All right guys, so three ways you can throw a knee. Um, the way I broke it down is uh, close range, kicking range, and during a clinch. So let's go back to orthodox. Um, three ways, uh, so close range, you just wanna throw it almost as if you're there's, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's a slight hinge back, and then I drive my, hip, my hips forward. So let's pretend the opponent's right here, or the bag's right here. Now moving on to kicking range, where the opponent is slightly further, or as far as where my kick is. And you want to cover that distance. So how do you cover that distance is you want to either take a slight skip forward or you want to basically walk down. So of those two things, I'll let me demonstrate for you. So skip, power knee. Skip. So that was the uh, kicking range how to cover that distance. And as far as for the clinch, I don't have a clinching partner right now, but it's essential, it's similar to um, kneeing close range. So what you wanna do is, let's pretend you're at a clinch. So it's either sideways, where you bring your, your, bring your knee outwards and slam it in towards the ribs of the opponent or their knees or your, your, your choice essentially. Um, so your hip clinch range, knee, or again, you bring your hip out and drive it in. Um, when you're practicing this with either a partner or during a clinch, you wanna make sure to go as high as possible. So you wanna go high and then in. You don't wanna go in and then high, because we all know where that goes. <laughs> okay, uh, moving on. Same goes with uh, orthodox stance. You can incorporate this in a softball stance. Um, the mechanics are basically the same. I'm not gonna go too in depth to that because it's essentially the same, but uh, let me know in the comments below if you guys wanna see um, tactics in a softball stance. So moving on. Let me demonstrate to you four combos where you can incorporate knees. All right guys, so one other aspect that I almost failed to mention is when you're at the clinch position or when you're clinching with a partner and you're doing the side knees, let me demonstrate uh, for you as if uh, you're looking at the partner. So basically, in an orthodox stance, you wanna clinch and you wanna, it's like you're coming from this direction and you're slamming in. So, okay. 
before I make sure you have your balance. Okay, and let's move on to the four combinations. All right guys, so combination number one, just a simple jab to set up the power knee. So if you want to go slow, which I'd recommend. Okay. Combination number two, cross. Another simple combination, cross to a switch knee. So the way I like to uh, for my combinations is I'm gonna be talking about this more in the next coming videos. The way I like to form my combinations is basically left, right, left, right. Makes things easier. Uh, obviously you can play with the timing and with the rhythm. And you could also play with same sides uh, of attack. But that's for more advanced uh, uh, or intermediate fighters. So second combination, cross, switch knee. So going slow. Oops. Try to get your bounce there, not like I did. So So using your hip to drive your drive your cross and then you essentially load this one. So it's either you can step and knee, or if the opponent's closer and they're not moving back, you can just cross, switch to get that power and to load up your left knee. Oh. So. As you can see, I'm not completely bringing my hands on because I'm using my hips to drive myself forward and I'm using my hands Drive myself upward. Okay, combination number three. This is a bit more advanced, but we're using two punch combinations and then a knee. So, jab cross. Combination number four, uh, similar to a jab cross uh, switch knee, but we're starting with our power hand. So cross hook, power knee. So uh, let me go slow for you. So you get the uh, essential, or you you see how I'm moving. So considering the opponent's not backing up, or that a corner, that sorry, cross hook, and then you use that to drive your power knee. Alright guys, so let me demonstrate for you uh, as if you're facing the opponent. So you wanna cross, hook, and jab cross, rear knee, try lead knee.
And that is all, guys. If you guys want more of this content, let me know in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel so I can put out more content for you guys. Uh, hope everyone's staying safe uh, and staying indoors. Um, over the next couple of uh, weeks, I'm going to be putting up uh, more content. And I'm going to be making like a sales pitch if you guys want one-on-one uh, -on -one training uh, personally or one-on-one -on -one virtual, virtual training. Hit me up in my social media. DM me. Um, it's the best way to reach me. As always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.